Hi sisters, James Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you guys know, Halloween is right around the corner. I'm posting this on a Tuesday and I think Halloween is on Thursday this year. So pretty soon and I am very, very excited. You guys know this is literally my all time favorite time of the year. I love, love, love spooky season. And I know that so many of you guys do as well. So today I am back with another Halloween themed video. And for today, we we're going to be doing one of my favorite things in the entire world, a drag transformation. Now personally, drag has influenced me so, so, so much growing up. I obviously have transformed a few different times on both my YouTube channel and on my Instagram into a drag queen, but I never actually got any real chance to perform. Probably for the better. You guys are welcome for that. But also I've learned so many different makeup techniques from drag queens and pretty much my entire vocabulary at this point is from RuPaul's Drag Race, my favorite show in the entire world. So I love drag. I have so much respect for it. And also Halloween is kind of like the birthday of so many drag queens. It is an amazing time to obviously express yourself, play with makeup and go out in costumes. And this time of the year is a lot of times drag queens realize that they have a true love for performing and makeup artistry. So for today's video, I thought it'd be so so much fun to sit down, do a drag transformation. I've not done one in quite a long time. And obviously you guys know, we just released the Morphe X James Charles mini palette. So we're gonna go from this to this. If you guys wanna see how I created this look from head to toe, keep on watching. All right, you guys, let's just jump right into this because it's going to be quite the long video today and I'm gonna to try to go in depth as possible. So our first step is always going to be to glue down our eyebrows. Obviously, I have very, very manly square eyebrows and I want to lift them up, make them snatched for the gods and we need to cover them in order to do so. I normally put moisturizer on my face first but I've not put anything on today so it's completely dry which means the glue will be able to stick to it. And I'm just gonna grab a normal Elmer's washable glue stick. Make sure it is the purple one that dries clear just like this, and I'm going to just go right into the brow. Now for this first layer, I definitely like to be very, very messy with my glue application because we are going to clean it up after, and we really wanna make sure every single hair is extremely, extremely coated, and there is a thick, with two Cs, layer on the brow. Notice I'm going against the grain of the hair as well. Now I'm just gonna grab any old angle brush from my brush collection, and I'm going to push very, very hard into my forehead and brush all the hairs upwards in the direction that they grow in. So we are flattening it to the face. And now with that glue again, I'm going to press that right down. Now just grabbing a wet wipe before that glue dries, I'm going to take this and I'm going to go around the edge of the glue and just wipe off any excess just because the glue does get kind of textured on the edges if you're not super careful. And we want this to look as smooth as possible. Now that that's all cleaned up, I'm just gonna grab my hair dryer and I'm going to dry my face. This isn't necessary, by the way. I'm just extremely impatient, so this really helps. I'm gonna add a second layer of glue, this time just going in the direction of the hairs. Try it again. More glue. More cleanup. More blow drying. And then one final layer just for safety. And now that eyebrow is pretty much all glued down, if you touch it, it should be completely dry and flat to your face. You should feel no texture whatsoever. It is a very weird and strange feeling and it looks strange, but it's about to be completely covered. Now, I used to use a translucent powder as the next step, but I recently learned otherwise. So instead, I'm going to grab a foundation powder. This one happens to be the Makeup Forever. I don't even know, I just found this in my set. And I'm just gonna grab a powder puff and I'm going to use this to cover over this brow first. You can use a translucent powder here instead, just like I did for a very, very long time. But by setting out the foundation powder first, you're basically just adding one more layer of coverage, which why not? Now I'm gonna grab some of the Dragon Beauty Color Correcting Skin Fire something, Nikita. Nobody has time for these names, okay? And I'm going to use this orange color corrector and paint this over top of the brow because my brow hairs are dark brown, which have a blue undertone and orange color corrects blue. So this will help make it disappear even more. While we're at it, I'm also going to color correct my five o'clock shadow region because this area is also gray because believe it or not, I am a man. Then I'm just gonna very gently tap out this color corrector. So this is pretty much one brow all complete. While this one is drying, I'm gonna do the other one off camera and I'll be right back. All right, you guys, now that the brows are all covered, it is time for foundation and brows. Now, foundation's pretty easy, but the brows are by far the hardest part of drag makeup, and it seems like they'd be so simple, but if you put them in the wrong place, or if they're not even, or if they're going the wrong direction, it's game over, so we're gonna be super, super careful today. I'm first gonna start with my Krylon TV Paint Stick in the shade NB. Honestly, this color doesn't even match me that well. The foundation stick is just so incredibly pigmented, though, so I'm going to use this to cover over my brows, and then I'm going to use another foundation later on for the rest of my face. So we're just going to place it on here. Mine's also ridiculously dry for some stupid reason. So instead of scrubbing this over the top of my brow, I don't want to disrupt anything. I'm just going to tap this on like an idiot. <laughs> 
That is the absolute scariest thing every single time. I'm gonna use this to go over my beard region as well. Now we're just going to blend that out. And for this, I'm just using a dense foundation brush. This is the Morphe M439. You guys can use code James for 10% off, and it's also in the James Charles original brush set. I normally use a beauty blender for foundation, and I definitely will in a few minutes, but when it comes to this particular foundation, or just kind of any stick foundations in general, I like to do a general half of a big brush first, just to really like scrub it in there. Okay, so now while this foundation is still wet, I'm gonna grab an angled powder and just like any brown cream. This happens to be a contour stick, and I'm gonna use this to start sketching out the brows. Now, you guys know it beforehand, I used to set everything first and then just draw out the brows with either powder and then conceal them after, but doing it beforehand is so much better because if you put it in the wrong place, you can easily fix the foundation while it's still wet and it won't get very, very messy, so I much prefer doing it this way. And then I'm just gonna pull this tail straight outwards. I feel like the one mistake that really gets people all the time when it comes to drag brows is just putting them too high. Unless you're doing a paint like Trixie Mattel or Kim Chi where you're literally trying to give yourself a new face, which I'm all here for. It's good to start your brow in the same place that it normally does and just lift it higher because that's gonna give it that more feminine type of effect rather than like a weird cartoon character. Okay, that is a really good base. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side now. Try to make them even as you can. Now that we have the general shape, I'm gonna grab the TV paint stick in 00. This is just the white one. Actually, I actually think it's technically off-white and just a flat concealer brush. This is the M410. And we're going to clean up the bottom of the brow and give us that shape. All right, so this is why doing your eyebrows first is so much better because I've literally been doing my brows now for 45 minutes and I still am really not happy with the way they're looking. I cannot get them even, but this will do because we can always fix them a little bit later on. I'm just going to move on. I'm next going to grab my TV foundation stick once again in white and I'm going to use this and put this right here in the center of my face, down here for highlights, on the sides of my nose, on the chin, and then just right here. And I'm just gonna blend that in. I'm just blending this white into my skin just like my normal beauty routine as if it were concealer. And this is going to really help bring attention to the center points of our face. With that same color that I used to draw in my brows, I'm just going to sketch in my contours. And I'm just going to blend this out using a fluffy brush. Last step before we get to set this face in place, I'm gonna grab my nose contouring brush, the E62, which is available in both the original and mini James Charles brush sets and I'm going to use this to sketch out my nose contour and make myself super super pinched. Finally 18 million years later we are done with our base now we get to set it in place and then basically redo it again with more powder. So this should be really fun but now it's pretty much smooth sailing from here on. I like to think not only God but also Jesus on this fine day I'm gonna grab the RCMA no color powder and basically just tap this off my bench, grab a powder puff and start packing this in. Now it's time to bring some color back that we literally just got rid of using this powder. This is why the drag process takes so many hours, but it's so worth it in the end. I'm gonna grab my Dragon Beauty face palette and I'm gonna start just recontouring my face, first using the shade Femme and my M405 brush. Just following literally the same exact shape that I made beforehand. Actually gonna grab an M527 instead, I don't have time for this. Gonna grab a little bit of Surge and use this to really hollow out the lower portion of the cheekbone, being very, very gentle with that shade because it is extremely pigmented. Now for blush, I'm just gonna grab an E4 brush and dip into the shade BB Girl in the face palette and use this color. I'm gonna give my face a quick spritz of some setting spray just because there's like 18,000 layers of powder at this point. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna grab an angle brush once again and dipping into the dark brown shade in the top right corner of the palette, which is T. I'm gonna use this to start filling in the tails of my brows. And then same thing on the other side. Next, I'm gonna grab an M508, which also comes in the mini brush set, and I'm gonna grab the shade Punch Me, which is the kind of neutral tone brown shade in the palette, and I'm gonna use this color to blend out the T inward. You guys wanna say hi to the video? <laughs> oh my oh. god! Joey, it looks actually really good on camera. Mommy looks even better. <laughs> Mom, leave us alone. Get out of here, Charlotte. Oh! Gorgeous. Three women. <laughs> okay, so now it's time for the eyeshadow portion where we get to actually have fun. Of course, I'm gonna be using the James Charles X Morphe mini palette, available on Morphe.com and in all Morphe stores, use code JAMES for 10% off, only $23, and also in all Ulta Beauty locations. Also, I'm just gonna be doing a simple rainbow look. You guys have seen me do these type of looks a lot of times before, but it is a rainbow drag concept. It'll make sense later on, so we're just gonna kinda like brush through this. It's just for the overall like, concepts and shapes. I'm gonna first grab B, the bright yellow shade, and put it right in my little inner crease region. And we're just gonna start blending it upwards in a circular shape. And I'm gonna grab an M433 and dip into 518, and I'm going to blend that right next to B. Adding a little bit of rusted, just 
just to add some dimension in there. I'm modeling my makeup, by the way, off of Raven, legendary drag queen from season two. Should have been the winner, but we're not gonna talk about that today. She is like by far the most iconic makeup legend ever. And I'm trying to follow like her general eye shape. With a little pencil brush, I'm just going to grab a little bit of 10% off and use this to shade the very bottom part of this orange. Like I said, we are gonna cut this so you won't even see this in a few seconds, but just to add a little bit of dimension. I'm next gonna grab another fluffy brush, another M433, and dip into Skip, the bright pink shade. And I'm going to use this and I'm going to blend this pink right in here. And I'm going to pull this color downwards, which is something that I normally don't do, but I'm gonna kind of actually close off this eye shape a little bit. Now with an M506, I'm gonna dip into a little bit of Love That, and I'm gonna use that to shade the bottom portion power shade of this pink. Now with just a white liner and some concealer brush, I'm going to carve out my crease, starting off in this inner corner. Okay, then I'm gonna set this liner in place using some more flashback. Now I'm gonna sketch in my winged liner. This is actually going in a good direction. I am happy. Okay, I'm gonna use the Anastasia Black Liquid Liner to sketch out a nice, juicy wing. Okay, so basically I'm gonna do this with my eye open, which is not really how you're supposed to do wing liner ever, but I want the wing liner to be above my actual eye lid. So therefore, basically my entire eyelid is gonna be black and then it'll look like a normal wing when my eye is open. That made sense, right? Now that that liner is giant, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of Spooky from the palette, top off the excess and just make sure that that black eyeliner is set in place and very, very black because we don't want it to transfer anywhere. On the lower lash line, we are first going to grab a little bit more of that white liner and I'm using just a flat brush and I'm going to fill in my water line. I'm basically just imagining that there's a straight line like if I look forward from like the corner of my eyeball just like outwards so I'm gonna fill all that in with white and this is definitely gonna take me looking closely in the mirror because this is an illusion since my face is not straight across James what mirror are you looking in my mini palette mirror, Lewis. It's great for glamming on the go. Now with another M508 brush, I'm gonna grab a little bit of cola first. And then I'm gonna put cola right in the middle of my lash line, right up against the actual lash line. And then like I said, I'm imagining there's a straight line, so I'm pulling that forward just like this. Okay, then with that same exact brush, the M508, I'm gonna grab a little bit of single and escape. And I'm just gonna pull this purple color out just like this. So see how that creates that like straight line shape? That's what we want. And then with that same brush again, just grabbing a little bit of social blade and completing that line in the front. Now I'm just blending out the line with a fluffier brush. This one is the E36. A little bit of playground. Okay, you guys, I have done drag makeup literally so many times now it is not even funny. And I've been trying to emulate Raven's like aura and just shapes of makeup since I literally started doing it. In fact, my first drag look ever, three years ago, was a Raven look. It was the worst drag makeup I've ever done in my entire life. But I feel like this is the first time that I've ever actually successfully gotten the shape. I feel like this looks so bomb. I am so excited right now. And it wasn't that hard either, but what may be hard is getting even on the other side, which I'm gonna go do off camera right now, and then I'll be right back to pop on the lashes and finish up the rest of the look. We are back, both eyes are now complete and somehow very symmetrical. It is a blessed day here in the sister studio. And and now we're about to apply some lashes. First, I'm just gonna apply a light coat of mascara. Today, I'm gonna use the Lily Lashes Triple X Mascara because it has been my favorite recently. Okay, and then I'm gonna carefully also apply out some mascara on my lower lashes, but I'm going to skip out on the lashes in my inner corners and also the lashes on my outer corners because I want those to remain white to keep that little like, spatial illusion going. For lashes, I'm just gonna pop on a typical 301 drag lash, but for once, I'm not gonna stack it. I just wanna do one lash. I'm not sure why. This is like brave of me to even attempt this, but it's gonna be good. All right, you guys, so those are both of the eyes all complete and it is now the home stretch. So we're gonna move on to the rest of the face. And the next step we have is going to be, of course, highlighting. So I'm gonna give my face a nice spritz of the Morphe Prep and Set setting spray just to bring some moisture back. And then I'm gonna grab a M504 and grab a little bit of face from the palette. Maybe a little bit of ring light too, honestly, why not? And just put this right on the cheekbone. A little bit on the forehead for a little bit of a natural glow. And then some right down the tip of the nose. Next, I'm gonna grab a little bit of Literally, which is my peachy blush shade from the palette. And I'm gonna use this to blend together my highlight and my blush. Now I'm going to clean up my lips and fill in the lips. Oh my God, we're like cruising along, thank God. Then we're just gonna fill in a nude lip, like always. Okay, you guys, this look is pretty much about complete at this point. I'm gonna give my face a nice spritz of Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray to lock everything in. And then the mini palette also serves as a fan because I cannot find my sister's fan anywhere, so. All right, you guys, that is the makeup portion of this look all complete. I am so happy with how this turned out. I feel like this is the first time that I've really gotten like my drag face and all the shapes and angles really, really good. And I am super, super proud of myself. And I hope that you guys learned a little bit as well. I guess this is definitely a good first time for me to even get everything semi-correct. If this is like a first time for all of you guys watching, 
watching this video. This transformation is definitely not yet complete though because of course we have a wig, jewelry, and a full gown as well before we head out to tonight's Halloween festivities. So let's head out of the studio and get dressed. All right, you guys, and that is this rainbow drag look inspired by the mini palette, all complete. I am literally obsessed with how this turned out. This is gonna be one of my favorite looks that I have ever, ever done. Shout out to my stylist, Joey Tao, for styling me in this gown and Michelle Herbert for creating it. She literally made the entire bodice one by one with broken pieces of mirror, which is so, so beautiful. And the bottom is all hand painted. She literally killed it. And also thank you to my good friend, James, for making this custom little paint dripped wig. I think this looks so, so, so cute. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and picked up a few new tips and tricks. I'm running so late for my Halloween party right now, so I really gotta go. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hello, you guys. Good morning. I look like I got hit by a bus currently. We did not get home last night until about six in the morning. Halloween is like the one time of the year that I will actually go out and party and it was lit, not gonna lie. Just watching back the footage from filming last night and I still love how the look turned out, but I was running an hour and a half late for my party and I realized that I did not really explain my look. When I announced the mini palette, pretty much every drag queen friend that I've ever met texted me and said that they needed it immediately because it would make getting ready in the backstage area so much easier. So that is why the dress is black and both the dress and the wig are splatter painted with different colors from the palette. And that is why the top of the bodice is made completely out of broken shards of mirror in honor of the palette now having a mirror. At first glance, I'm now realizing it may not be that obvious, but I'm really proud of how the look turned out and I'm really, really grateful to the designers who worked super hard on it. I think it looked so beautiful. So that is what the concept was and and I hope you guys enjoyed this transformation. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up down below. If you've not already, make sure to click that big red subscribe button down below and come join the sisterhood. I would love to have you guys in the family and also click that bell icon so you can get notification every time I upload a brand new video. If you'd like to follow me on my makeup journey, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok or all just James Charles. And my Snapchat for more behind the scenes I stuff is James Charles and the extra S after Charles. This video, sister shout out goes to sister Brenda. Thank you so much, love, for always following and supporting. You know I love you so, so, so much. And if you'd like to be in the next videos, sister shout out to don't forget to always retweet my video links when they go live on Twitter. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Happy Halloween, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.